Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Finally got a hold of the DJI Mini 3 Pro drone, and we're gonna find out how this thing really works. This is gonna be my series on it. You probably have seen a bunch of my series uh, videos of drones, and if you haven't, you're missing out because I really do unbiased reviews on these things. Go ahead and check the link down in the description to subscribe down there, down below. So this is gonna be the first in the series for the DJI Mini 3 Pro. As you can see, I got the Flymore Kit Plus. This is the one that includes those 47 minute flight time batteries and we're really going to see if that actually holds true in our t flight tests. The actual Mini 3 Pro package only comes with the shorter flight time battery, but if you do put the um, larger batteries in, I guess it's going over 249 grams, so just be aware of that. Anyway guys, this is the first in the series. We're gonna unbox it, set it up, do some updating, just see how all that is now working. So let's get started. Okay, so I have not opened this bad boy up yet, so it's gonna be kind of a first on the camera with you guys. Sometimes it's kind of fun to see uh, first reactions, you know what I mean? For somebody who's been doing this for a while, so you guys can kind of see what a kind of a um, veteran drone reviewer kind of feels about what they're seeing for the first time. Actually, we don't need the knife for this, but at least it has tamper-proof seals on the box itself that the drone comes in. So opening this bad boy up, and of course on the top, it just tells us we need to download the DJI Fly app, gives a little QR code, and the first thing we're seeing is the little mini. So cool, let's just take this out of the bag, see how this thing looks. Sometimes, you know, I kind of switch it up, I do other things first, but I guess we'll just take a look, since it's on the top, at the new DJI Mini 3 Pro. From what I'm hearing, it's a um, pretty awesome drone, you know? And it should be for the price you're paying. I mean, this whole, this drone and the Flymore combo kit with those extended batteries for more flight time was right, right around like $1,100. So, you know, we're getting up into like Mavic 2S territory, right, with all this stuff. Spin it around, let you guys look at it. Uh, you can see how the sensors ha are on the bottom it's got these big old sensors on the front. No sensors on the rear? Oh, there they are, little ones there. So I'm not expecting this thing to be fully 360 obstacle avoidance. It would have been kind of cool if they could have made it that, but you know how DJI does is they always leave something out and then they put it in the next generation. We are gonna test this on some orbits and see if it crashes into trees and stuff. So make sure you don't miss uh, the flight tests and the range tests. Also gonna do a range test on this since we have those extended batteries. You know, we really wanna see how far and long this thing can fly. There is the drone. So we're just gonna put that over on the side and see what else we get in the box here. So top tier opens up and then I got the the kit that comes with uh, this kind of smart controller that has the screen on it, right? So the price has come down on this controller. You know, I was like, I don't really need it. I'll just put my, my phone up there. But since the difference in the price with the controller or not is really like only a hundred or so dollars nowadays, let me go ahead and buy this and give it a try, you know? Um, I buy all my stuff myself, so I'm not getting any freebies from DJI. I guess it keeps my reviews completely unbiased because I've heard that DJI really is strict about what you say about them. So <laughs> wanted to get the one with the screen, so we're gonna see how that does. Last thing in the box, guys, is just a little uh, package here and we're gonna open this up. Looks like it's just the manuals, uh, probably extra sticks. Let's see everything we get. Disclaimers and stuff like that. We have a new extra two sets of propellers. So you're not gonna get four, you're only gonna get two. But as you can see, that Flymore Kit Plus comes with a complete set as well. So I've got a whole set and a half if you buy that Flymore kit. A little screwdriver is gonna be handy if we're ever changing propellers, which I really have never had to do because it's so hard to crash these things. A little USB C to C cable right there. And that's really it in the entire box for the Mini 3 Pro with their kind of advanced controller with the screen on it, okay? We're gonna look at this stuff more in depth uh, once I unbox that Flymore kit. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and bust into this thing. I uh, have not opened this either, so my first time with you guys. 
let's go ahead and take that off and see what we got right what i'm excited about is pretty much just the bag and these high capacity batteries as you can see nothing else in there and it just kind of looks like the you know the basic bag they've been offering for pretty much all of their mini drones very similar maybe a little bit different on the material here they're kind of um, switching it up a bit right there a little cross pattern but you know you have this front little pocket which is just a thin little pocket in the front and then bottom isn't different material it's the same material sometimes they have more of a ruggedized material on the bottom but it looks like they're not doing that and then you have your shoulder strap kind of waterproof uh, or weather resistant zipper rubber material which they're always doing and that's basically it no pockets on the front of that side we unzip this bad boy and then we have a zipper on the top here are the four sets of propellers right right here and then just that USB cable that they were talking about is in the top bag there. We got a spot for our drone. We got a spot for the controller. There's a little inside pocket in the front you can put stuff in. And then all there is is a pocket on the left, which pretty much houses everything that's included in this. As you can see, nothing else in the bag there at all. And so we're pulling out the multi-charger. Cool. So I'm really excited to see this is way different than anything else they've done as far as the um, design of it. You can see how different it looks. So pretty cool. You know, I am liking it because some chargers, you know, you just like, you have to hook it on the side and your batteries end up like falling off and disconnecting easily. But with this, check it out. We got a clip in, actually clip in thing. So that thing's never going to fall out. Like if it falls over or you have it on a weird situation or you're driving in your car and it's kind of bumping around, these things are clipped in and they're not going to stop charging unless you actually pull the thing out. Or of course your cable comes out here. Speaking of cable ports, we have that uh, USB a out. So that's going to be for like charging your controller simultaneously. And then we have the USB C in and power. And that's basically all you get. Nothing's happening with the power button. So these are the high capacity batteries. Let's see what size these are. The writing has gotten so darn small, it's really hard to see this, but I'm gonna tell you they're 3850 mAh, 8.5 volts. So they're kind of a high voltage uh, 2S battery. And it looks like they're going back to like the lithium polymer style flat packs or so. I don't think these are cylindrical in here. Yeah, I think these are kind of flat packs. I mean, these are supposed to get 47 minutes of flight time, so I don't care what technology's in these as long as the dang drone flies for a long time, right? So anyway, I got two of those, right? So those go in there, and then let me pop the battery that's in the drone out. I didn't see it in the package. They usually have it in here. And they always say charge the battery to activate the drone Um on their batteries right so you have to charge each battery first and then it kind of activates and it looks like the only way you can kind of get the battery out is by pulling the arms down a little bit okay so good to know you gotta pop those arms down just a little squeeze here and then that battery will pop out and this battery is about 2450 mah and it's the same voltage of course 8.5 maximum voltage so Let's just do a little comparison. Um, the size, yeah, it's definitely pretty much, yeah, it's gotta be the same, right, to fit in the drone, but just letting you know, this is quite a bit heavier than the stock battery. This is the stock battery on the right. Ultralight 249 gram on this battery, stock battery that it comes with, but it doesn't say that on this, right? Because it's gonna go over that if you put in these high capacity batteries. And since we got three batteries, we got three batteries in our charger. So that's awesome. Just charge everything up. They're not gonna charge all at the same time. Uh, they do have these little readouts here. So as one battery is charging, it's gonna be going up in lights. Once that battery is charged, it'll go up to the next battery. And the way they do it is the battery that's the most charged will charge first, just to get you flying up in the air first. That's kind of how DJI does it. All right, and the only other thing in this box for the flamware was, remember, the manuals. And that's really all there is to it, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and just 
kind of get more in depth into the drone then we're going to put it up on the controller get it all synced up see if there's any updates right because i like to go through that with you as well really what the update process is like so let's see here let's just go ahead and open this thing up first um same kind of theory but what's cool about it is it does look like you can open up either or first in this situation because these are just going straight back and then these ones are going down into the front i like how they've kind of improved that where you're not um stuck with opening uh, one set first because as you can see there's no legs on these to get an interfere So you can open whichever ones you want first and last right? So rears pop out that way fronts rotate out forward um, Yeah, so the feet are actually on the body here and then it looks like they're also gonna just kind of rest on the battery Let's pull this battery back out Put that back in you can see how this battery just kind of slides in and then you push it till those two um, spring-loaded clips clip in there. Yeah, so it's just sitting on the ground on here and here. So no need uh, landing gear on the arm. So I think that's probably going to be an improvement. It'll also bring the center of gravity kind of into the middle of the drone as well. Let's check out these motors. So they're the tiniest little things. It looks like they're getting smaller. Look how low profile these things are just the tiniest they really just don't feel like they're really high tension so you know we're going to also see how this thing does in the wind too we got little lights on the front here of the front motors many lights on the back i'm not really seeing any other lights besides those front little motors so that's interesting we have our power button here of course that power is not going to go up because the battery is not charged cool little cooling vents on the back here coming out there's our little ports on the back so we have a USB-C so you could charge this thing if you wanted to while the battery is in then there's our little micro SD card slot for onboard uh, recording getting over to the bottom really look at this all we really have a couple little cooling vents for the battery here and then just two big optical sensors right there, little cameras. So the cameras are one, two, three, four. And then remember, it's interesting on this one, they're right here, five, six for the rear obstacle avoidance. So they're actually kind of angled back and up on these cameras. So you're gonna get a little bit of uh, upward avoidance as well it looks like so you're not like running into trees let's open up this gimbal cover so a simple little gimbal cover it looks like they actually put some foam in here you can see that they tell you to remove before use so i don't know if you're going to want to keep this in and transport you're probably going to want to hang on to this piece of foam because that'll really um just dampen your camera if you're transporting it around interesting they have all of these little um scratch resistant things which i'm just gonna take off with you guys here one two three four this is gonna do 4k 60 guys so there is the camera there um it's looking fantastic uh interesting setup they look at they reversed the gimbal it's down below now and it's attached on the sides probably to lower that center of gravity right so it has to work less because gravity is going down so very interesting so there's our roll uh, okay and then our pitch and you can see how that whole thing is just on the bottom now swinging so it's not attached at all in the top there this is all just ventilation on the top and I really like what they're doing on the ventilation here instead of just a giant open cavity like they normally have look at these uh, cooling fins get a little closer that's a nice fin fit and finish molded area back here with little vents and kind of like a, looks like partially a little screen there, maybe to keep out bugs and whatnot. And also on the very top, we have those those vents as well. You can see a little wire management here. They're always good at, um, you know, putting that sheathing all around their, their wires for their wire management. So, you know, very high quality. It feels high quality. It feels like you're holding just like a little um, Mavic 2S or something, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like a slightly rough finish so it does have that quality feel to it. Oh, there are two more sensors there. I totally almost missed those. You see those little tabs on the uh, gimbal cover? They're utilizing those little tabs with what looks like um, little laser sensors, possibly little ground sensing um, lasers 
or light sensors and the way that gimbal works is it's just basically poking right into there. As long as you're holding the drone level, it looks like it's pretty easy just to put that notch in the middle of the vent. And then once you have the thing kind of level, just make sure the camera is facing forward. So the camera is really designated to a certain area in this, in this gimbal. So it might take a little while, but there we go. Saw that? The camera just has to be facing forward and then the bottom clips. So just so the camera is being held in by these little ribs in there. So might take a little bit to get used to that, but that's it. I mean, it's on there good. It's not gonna come off too easy unless you pull that bottom part. All right, well, there's the drone. Let's put that over on the side and uh, let's just try to check out this controller before we start charging everything up. So really nice fit and finish on this controller. Uh, their DJI, you know, they're second to none on their fit and finish, just amazing. Does look like they're getting better uh, at quality every single time they release something. This is a really nice rubberized grip. C1, C2 triggers here. A nice little rubberized slot to put our sticks in here. We have a heat sink on the back. It's just rotated over to the bottom here. We have a USB-C port. Kind of cool, we have the little thread areas for if you wanted to put this thing on a stand and also a little thread uh, nuts embedded in here. Now these are tiny little sticks. You can see how these are screwing into the gimbals there and they're just tiny little um, posts sticking up. So just be careful with that. Don't cross thread it. Feels really good though. Springs are pretty tight as usual with you know DJI stuffs, but they feel like they're just about perfect. Gimbals feel high quality. These are just aluminum sticks. No rubber on these, just pure aluminum. If we hit it once, you can see that it's coming about 60% charged right here. Cinematic, normal, and sport selection button here. Return to home and pause. I like how they're going with orange now, white and orange, kind of interesting. And then we got our power button there. And of course, all the DJI stuff is always just click, click and hold, right? And it powers up, so. Don't have the drone on, but there's the screen real quick. It's just going to go through its kind of boot up process and then wait for the linking of the drone. But we need to turn the drone on first. Up on the top, we've got our picture and our video button. Looks like actually that's probably a speaker port right here. These have little antenna icons on them. I'm not sure if you guys can see those in the camera very well. I'll try to kind of rotate this thing. But it looks like the antennas are right here. So no antennas you have to actually put up but you're going to have to point this thing obviously at the drone like this in order for those to get the best um, signal. So we have two rollers right here and they both just end and then spring, spring back. One is not just clicking and rotating, they're both the same where they just stop and spring back to center. Neither of them click in, not feeling any click on the rollers. That's it for the controller guys. Let me uh, charge everything up, get back, turn the drone on, try to get this thing linked up, boot it up, see how the interface is. Really, you wanna just charge all your stuff up first because there's gonna be a lot of updating usually with DJI stuff. So let me go ahead and do that and then we will continue on with this review. Okay guys, so that took an extremely long time to charge these three batteries. I wanna say um, each of the high capacity batteries that the Fly Market came with, seem to take about like two to three hours each. So you're talking like four to six hours for these two batteries. Then this battery that came with the drone itself, the lighter battery, um, this one actually seemed to take about an hour. So just remember, it's gonna be like, gosh, right around six hours to charge all three batteries at the same time. And just so you know, when you do plug in your controller, if you're deciding to charge your controller off of this as well, it won't even start to charge the controller until all of the batteries are charged. So if you wanna kinda of get everything charged up as quickly as possible, just use one of these cables or a different cable you have just to charge that controller up separately using maybe like a cell phone plug or something. And that gets to maybe one of the cons as well. The length of time it takes to charge is one, of course, con with this kit. The second would be they don't give you any um, kind of wall adapter plug. These are for all different kinds of countries and I guess they don't wanna put the adapter for different kinds of countries in the box. And that has always kind of been a con with DJI is they just don't do that. I guess they're expecting you to have your own cell phone charger that you can put your 
uh, USB cord into. But if there was one little gripe already, it would be that, and it's just that they take so long to charge. Anyway, moving on, once this is charged, or even if it's partially charged on your batteries, you can actually use this as a battery bank. So that's one pro, which may or may not cancel out the cons for you. But check it out, you can plug in any kind of uh, USB device. For example, there's the controller. It's not gonna start charging until you press this power button here on the actual multi-charger. So you can see I press the power on there and now look at the controller. It is actually starting to charge. I don't know if that's a con or what because it's the first charge, but I would never get the uh, fifth light lighting up. So I'm not sure if it's um, kind of a defective issue. They need to update the software, but we're gonna go through the update uh, just to be sure that it's not like something that they solved in an update. So if, if you see real quick, me turn on the controller, click, click and hold. You see that it's only at the third light, actually. I think I said four, but it's at the third light. It will not go to the fourth light to indicate a 100% charge. Now we're gonna go ahead and go through the startup process. I wanna find uh, my language, which is English, and hit next here. So I'm just gonna go up through this full uh, process with you so you know how to kinda start everything up. Software terms of use, go ahead and look through that. A lot of dang stuff and go ahead and agree if you do agree, otherwise you're not gonna be able to use the darn thing. United States is already checked here. Of course, pick the one for your country, click next. It's gonna go ahead and look for your Wi-Fi network. So here's my Wi-Fi right here. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and connect to your Wi-Fi network at home. You have to go ahead and do this with DJI products. Of course, if you don't have this smart controller, you can use the other controller. You know, that the you can even use the same controller that the Mini 2 came with if you just wanted to buy the Mini 3 drone itself and not even buy a controller. You can use that controller and use a phone or a tablet on that one. Just like any other kind of um, cell phone or anything, you can see uh, when you click in the box, this cool keyboard comes up and you can go ahead and uh, punch in your password. Go ahead and press OK. We are connected, see a little check mark there? And then that's the Wi-Fi on or off. You can manually turn it on or off. We'll go ahead and go uh, next. Boom. Change the time as well. So we're going to click here and find your territory. Hawaii GMT negative 10. So click that. Press OK. And let's click next. Note, make sure time is set correctly. Hawaii, yes. And confirm. Okay, and then log in. So this is where you're gonna need to either create a DJI account, guys. Um, if you have other drones you fly and you're using your phone, obviously your phone's not in this controller, so you're gonna need to log into your account again. But if you do have a phone, um, if you're using the other controller that came with the Mini 2, for example, you can, like I say, you can use the same controller. Um, your account will probably already be loaded in your phone. But in this case, I'm going to have to log in. So we're logged in with the email and password, and I'm going to activate. So there we go. You can either join DJ Product Improvement or not. I'm going to go ahead and press not now. And the next screen is just a welcome. Let's get started with a guide on how to use this product. Start. You can also skip up here if you already kind of know how to use this type of controller. Swipe horizontally from the edge of screen to return to previous screen. Hmm, interesting. Swipe this way to continue. Adjust left dial up here on the top is going to be our gimbal adjustment. And then this is actually gonna be our camera zoom. Cool, so in and out for the camera on the Mini 3. Cool, a little a couple pro features here, which is awesome. Record, press the video record and shutter for the picture and check this out. Half press to focus, that's awesome. Full press to take a photo. So that would be here, kind of like on DSLR cameras. You know how you press the shutter button halfway to focus it in? So that is a great feature and then all the way to take it. So you're gonna hear two things, half press, Pushing more, take a picture. That's pretty awesome. Continuing on, let's go swipe again. 
Return to home, we have our switch flight modes, Cine Smooth, Normal, and Sport. This button right here in the middle. Then we have a brake, press to pause, flight, and hover. So say you're doing one of those advanced functions like a orbit or something, you can go ahead and just press this one time really quick and it'll pause. And so let's say you are interrupted or have to do something else, um, you can continue after that. C1 and 2 and C2 buttons on the very bottom of the controller right here, these are going to do customizable functions okay they're probably set to a default which we'll be checking out when we go in the interface but they are customizable that's great and here we go for our connection since I don't even have the drone on we have a red light up here and it's telling you if it's green the aircrafts connected solid yellow uh, firmware upgrade is failed so we'll go through the upgrade as well I'm sure it's gonna have some kind of update when we boot the drone up, more status indicators. Even the controller here can overheat, swiping over here. Now this was my concern is how are these antennas in the controller? So apparently if you see here, you wanna face the front of the controller directly at the aircraft at all times. So you're gonna to need to be tilting your controller. If the aircraft is above you or below you, you're gonna kinda of need to do this and tilt it around so that this portion is facing the aircraft perfectly. There we go, that's it. Let's go to DJI Fly. Waiting for it, initializing source data. Okay, so I just wanna show you guys everything that's involved here, you know, just so you know what's going on. And let's see if this thing can, can boot up. So I'd imagine it's kinda of syncing to my account. All right, so we got a little video playing. You know, that's DJI's promo video coming out of the speaker. Continuing on, let's see what we have here. So mobile device info, information authorization. So this is a mobile device now that it's linked to my Wi-Fi, basically a phone, if you will, um, without uh, kind of a cell phone chip in it. Up to you, I mean, the advanced features of the drone may not work unless you have all those checked off who knows what china is sharing with the government so at your own discretion right looks like you can may, maybe can press that and it tells you some more information on it all right so i'm just going to click next leave everything on because i want this thing to work for the review as good as possible improvement program again i don't want to join it right now and there we go so we have an, kind of an on-screen menu as well. It's kind of highlighting certain things. There's the academy up there on the right, clicking next, connection guide down there on the bottom. Okay, and that brings us into our main screen, cool. So before I do anything on the controller anymore, any further, I wanna go ahead and pop a battery in here. It's only gonna be able to go one way. So just like that, popping in. Got to take off, remember the gimbal cover's off. On the back top power button, a quick press, fully charged, press and hold. Those buttons come up and let's see how this thing kind of boots up. So there's DJI's new chime, we have blinking, the gimbal is centering the camera. Okay, back and back out and we're looking for, remember that connection on the controller is now green and it immediately went into the drone and there I am sitting there on the couch all right so let's flip this thing around and we had a, we had FPV for a second but now this popped up here and it's um, continuing to activate so we have terms of use go ahead and read all that stuff agree and now it's activating so it's using your wi-fi connection you set up in your house remember it has to be connected now it's restarting the aircraft okay so it's basically linking the aircraft i guess to your account right now so aircraft is restarting and the reason why i mean this might be kind of boring to some of you guys but the reason why i do this guys is just so you know newbies that have bought this as their first dji drone maybe and DJI has also changed this process um, as it has progressed, the company has progressed, just so you have the most detailed information, you know what I mean? Do you wanna do the DJI carry fresh, okay? 
So it tells you everything about it. You have two replacements. It'll cover free two-way shipping, water damage coverage, and fly away coverage. Now, unless they've improved that, I don't know, because before you used to have to bring them the damaged drone. So I guess if you want, go ahead and purchase that. So I'm gonna skip that. I mean, this should be a pretty smart drone. So I'm gonna trust it. Of course, we're gonna try those orbit in the trees. So I might be kicking myself in the butt right now by not getting that DJI carry fresh, but kind of insurance through DJI for your drone. Do that if you want to. Skipping, all right, cancel, skip, confirm. Okay, there we go. So we just had to confirm it and get out there. So here we go, guys. This is the update I was talking about and it's doing all these things. All right, let's do it. This is an over a gig update, guys. So this is probably gonna take a while but I'm gonna be walking you through it, um, through the whole process. Remember, it's using the speed of your internet to download this. And I'm only getting, it's also dependent on the DJI servers, right? How fast they can push this stuff out. So if a lot of guys are downloading right now this update, and I'm sure a lot of people have got this drone, you're gonna kind of be limited to how fast DJI can serve this update. So this looks like it's gonna take a while. So I'm gonna tune in right when it's like maybe either rebooting or like right around 100%. And that's why it's important to make sure you charge at least one battery fully and the controller fully. My experience, you do not wanna run out of power when you're doing these updates, all right? So we'll chime in a little later when this uh, there's some events to this update. Okay guys, so we're moving from downloading to installing, right about 50%. And I wanna say that um, the percentage was ticking away when it was downloading at about 10 seconds per percent. Anyway, we're in our second stage here. Now it says it's installing the software. And you can see here that it's going fairly quick. One thing of warning is it doesn't seem like the Mini 3 Pro has any kind of fan on it or it hasn't kicked on yet. It's completely silent. So remember with the Mini 1 and the Mini 2, there were some overheating issues if it was just sitting for a while. So we're gonna see if that is the case as well. Um, when we boot it up, it may overheat if we're using the FPV. Uh, there we go. So the drone is rebooting at 82% of the update. So again, um, you wanna have patience and wait for this thing to do its thing. Don't wanna jump the gun and do anything before this is done. Okay, so it continued on counting away the uh, percentage, relinked itself after the reboot. And as you can see, the controller is eating some power. It's already, the third light is now blinking. Hopefully when the update is done to the controller, I'm hoping there is an update. We'll be able to see a green light on the top after we recharge it. That just seems like a firmware issue or something. Looks like the controller just, the screen just went off, interesting. The controller's rebooting, okay. So apparently that was, yep. A system update for the controller as well. So you can see the drone over there blinking two lights in the middle. And you can see the screen of the controller is now white and it says installing update. Okay, it looks like that uh, just took about maybe two minutes actually. Drone lights went up to full power four. Controller is now rebooting again. I haven't touched anything. I'm just kind of, you know, waiting and being patient for this whole thing to uh, do its thing. And this is how it is with DJI products, guys. Even other drone manufacturers as well. You just wanna make sure you have the latest updates for all of the features to work correctly. So still waiting. System is optimizing. Okay, you can see there on the screen. I know that DJI uses Android OS's in their smart controllers or their all-in-one controllers with the screen. So all of you Apple guys, there's the drone rebooting again over on the left. Too bad you're not getting an Apple screen or portable device in your controller. You're actually getting an Android device. All right, so initializing resource data. Uh, you can see that thing ticking away there. It's at just about 100%. The drone shut off again over on the left. I'm not seeing any lights here. Maybe if I bring the controller down a bit. Remote controller firmware installed. I'm gonna click X on that. 
make that go away. So it looks like the drone is going to stay powered off. So let's go ahead and give it another power on. Okay, guys? Press, press, and hold. And letting go. All right? So we'll leave the controller on, waiting for that uh, green light on the controller. There we go. So it binds a lot quicker than other DJI products like the Mini 1, Mini 2. You saw how fast that light turned green on the controller. That was basically immediate. All right, so there we go. Let's uh, kind of turn this over so it can focus in on something and we can kind of see it. There it is over to the couch there. So what do we have on the screen, guys? SD card unavailable, storage location, switch to aircraft, okay? So we have some internal storage on the aircraft if we don't have an SD card in the drone. Point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Okay, so coming from the controller, did you hear that? Home point updated, please check it on the map. So we have a little bit of information there. Audible information, same kind of screen as other DJI products. Battery percentage is kind of this ring at 86%. So we used about 15% just about updating that. I have to say just touching the drone, it's extremely hot here. I'm just feeling it, very hot and there's no fan noise. So let's see if this thing actually overheats while we're using the FPV. Okay, so flight time, it's all zeroed out. We have our RC signal. We have our obstacle avoidance here is on. We have our GPS satellites. I'm actually getting 14 in the house. So that's actually pretty great. We have all our camera functions here cluster. Over on the bottom right, we have our camera either auto or manual. EV resolution in frames per second. It's defaulting at 4 point or 4K at 30 frames per second. Onboard storage, that's memory in the craft without an SD card. Let's see if we click on that. Uh, we have a total usable of 1.21 gigabytes, okay guys? So not a whole lot. I'll probably be putting in like maybe a 64 gig card or 32 in there. Click it again, make that go away. Over on the left here, uh, we're gonna have our normal um, telemetry data. So distance, speed, height, up and down speed, like our speed going up and down in elevation. We have our map here, so you're gonna press that for your map. Let's just click that real quick, and you can see that comes up. Um, right now it's just using like the street maps, the road maps. And then we can actually go ahead and choose, let's see, yeah, our layers right here on the right. I like to use the mix. I want satellite and labels, right? So there's my house there, a little bit blurry. <laughs> But anyway, that's the map and you have the other functions, right? You can show like the altitude zone um, color layer. So let's zoom out real quick. And you can see that there is an airport down there in Kahului on Maui. Powering off automatically. Here we go. It's overheating. Okay. So powering off automatically to cool down. Okay. Anyway, that's the map. There's also, remember there's that Find My Drone that I've used several times in some of my other videos. We'll see if we have to use it on this one in like the range test, but great feature. You lose your drone, it lands. You click on that, it knows the last known GPS position and boom, there you go. And the drone just shut off. So Mini 3 is no different, guys. It's going to overheat and shut off if you're not flying, okay? I think it's about like around 80 degrees outside. So nothing major, but it has shut off. I'm gonna have to let this thing cool down. So a little bit of a con here. There's no fan in the Mini 3, okay? So, you know, I just wanted you guys to know the, the pros and cons. You may have not seen this before with other reviewers, but you're gonna see it with me uh, on the pros and the cons of everything I review. So I'm gonna let this cool down for a few minutes and then try to restart and let's see if we can kind of continue on checking out the options on the screen. Okay guys, we're back. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of those um, extra capacity batteries because it's cool. I just pulled out the normal battery and this is insanely hot. So this side especially with the sticker on it was really hot, almost like too hot to touch. The drone was almost too hot to touch. So keep that in mind, just wanna let you guys know. I went ahead and put it in front of a fan I had. Um, so if you're gonna be doing this, letting it sit on a table for a while, you may wanna put a fan on it. I don't wanna do that because it's gonna be hard to hear my voice. 
but let's put a new battery in that's cool from our multi-charger. Let's go ahead and boot this thing up again. I'm actually working on, remember the Hubson uh, Xeno Mini Pro? I'm working on a review for that one and it actually disables the FPV while it's not flying. So that may be something that DJI wants to look into just so it's not like overheating and shutting off. But let's see how long it lasts after it's cooled down. I just basically let it cool down for five minutes and put in that cool battery. Continuing on, we were talking about uh, the display here. This is where you wanna take off. So you can just press and hold to take off. We'll do that in the flight test coming up next. Your modes over here is gonna show you on the left side when you switch this, it's gonna change C, N, or S mode. And it says uh, altitude zone. And did you see that? I accidentally clicked the camera button on top here and check that out. You push it in halfway, remember? It's gonna focus what's ever in that little reticle there. So that's a cool feature. That's something that you saw in like the Mavic Pro, remember? But you didn't see that in the Mini. So that's a great addition there. Let's just go back and I wanna just see if there's any more updates. It has another firmware update. Okay, so it was good that we actually restarted Let's just see it here. This looks like a quick little update. It's already at 73%. Let's click more. Software will be updated to the latest version to prevent flight safety risks due to inconsistent firmware. Okay, you know what this is? Is it's the battery. So whenever you see these little updates like this, it's every time you put in a new battery, the battery is trying to match the firmware of the craft. So it's, I think it's updating the battery right now is what's going on. So, you know, this is going to take a little while, but not nearly as long as when you update uh, the actual firmware on the aircraft. Drones rebooting over here on the left. Do you see that? Controllers disconnected. We're at 96%. And controllers green linked up to the craft. And let's get our 100% and then we can move on. But this too, like good to know, um, every time you put in a new battery that hasn't been updated, it's gonna ask you to do this, all right? It says it should automatically power off, which it did, and it's saying restart aircraft. Okay, so that battery has been updated. And then press X there, and we're just gonna wait for it to connect again. Check out our battery on the controller. It looks like it's down to half charge. Um, that's a little bit worrisome, especially since I couldn't charge it all the way to four bars. It only did up to three, so I'm gonna charge it again, and I'll let you guys know in the flight test if it actually can now charge up to four bars. But check it out, it's telling us that the battery firmware update successful when aircraft automatically powers off restart. Okay, we already did that. So if we would have, have come back to the screen before powering it on, that's what it would have told us. Another update, fly safe um, update. So this should be super quick. Airports and area, the areas that you really shouldn't be flying in. And you know, that's the thing is you don't wanna be flying around airports, number one. You don't wanna be flying too high. The whole line of sight thing is pretty ridiculous to me. I mean, a lot of you may disagree, but just kind of a rush through blanket laws are kind of ridiculous to me. Just seems like it's catering to the commercial. You know, when Amazon starts flying their drones, in columns of air below aircraft. They don't wanna have us hobbyists in the way, right? So I think that's honestly why these rules came into place and were pushed through so easily. Anyway, that's my opinion. Um, we're still updating the FlySafe database, so this is gonna take a little bit. Again, just wait for this to all finish. There you go, caught me by surprise. That sucker updated actually really quickly after I, I said that, but anyway, FlySafe is updated. So guys, that should be really um, just about it on the updates. Hopefully, I'm trying to click that button. DJI Care Refresh. Okay, so the only thing that's gonna come up after that is they're gonna want you to get that refresh. And you kinda need to get that within, I think, 48 hours of uh, you buying and activating the drone, okay? Let's go back into the GoFly and kinda finish our little uh, setup informational session. And uh, there we go. So we have a screen that pops up now beginner flight tutorial. So it's gonna kind of go through this. So definitely if you're new to drones in general, you can also click on the screen. Did you see that? So this one will focus on items that you click. Great, only really seen in the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. So they're bringing these features into the mini. That's awesome. I wanted to go into the settings right here. And I kind of wanted to go through just real quickly on what you see on the screen. A-Pass here, 
Um, it's defaulting in break mode. Like when it sees obstacles, it'll break or you can turn it off, but you'll crash possibly. Uh, I like to have it in bypass because I want it to fly around things automatically, right? You can disable sideways flight. I don't want to disable that because I want to see if it hits things from the side, right? You know what I want to do, guys, is I want to go to the settings that brings it into Imperial. Meters, kilometers, and Imperial. I'm in the U.S., so I want to use Imperial. I like my feet, miles, and all that stuff. Subject scanning. We'll just leave all this pretty much... Uh, as it comes stock stick mode mode two but you have the option to do mode one two three or custom check it out you can change any stick to do whatever you want i like my mode two so i'm going to leave it at mode two but at least you have that option for people that have different types of control c1 and c2 buttons remember these guys down here on the bottom of the controller they are defaulted as C1, recenter gimbal, and C2, portrait or landscape. Kind of cool, you can do portrait photos with this drone. It just turns the camera sideways. So that was in control. Let's go back to safety real quick since we were able to change our units in the control. I just want to go ahead and f uh, scroll down here real quick. Max altitude. We're going to crank our distance up to no limit for a range test. Auto RTH altitude, that's pretty high. 328 feet, I don't want it that high. I want around 100 feet, you know? That'll be um, higher than any trees in my area or buildings where I'm gonna be flying. And that's what you wanna assess, just the return to the home. Just make sure it's gonna be higher than any buildings or trees in your area. Compass and IMU are normal. Nowadays, the way these guys come shipped is you don't really have to do this stuff unless it tells you to. So unless you see like a calibration error, and there we go, it just had a compass error and IMU error, that was weird. So you may wanna calibrate that, and now it's back to normal. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. You may want to calibrate your compass in your flight field before you fly at least once. Find my drone is here as well. And advanced safety settings. Let's see what this is. Okay, so when the signal's lost, you can choose what to do. I don't know why you wouldn't want to have it RTH unless you're moving with the drone. You might want to have it hover or descend so it doesn't go back to a place where you are not. Let's go over to camera, color, normal, decine, MP4, MOV, H264, 265, video, subtitles, anti-flicker auto, histogram, peaking levels, overexposure warning, grid lines if you want, white balance, auto or manual, and we can format our cards here or the internal memory. Transmission, I always use dual band. I've never had any problems with it. It kind of auto switches to pick the best channel for the interference in your area. Even in my range tests, I've never had any issues with that. So I'm just gonna leave it at dual band, but you can change it, 2.4 to 5.8, auto or manual, selecting across the spectrum here. And about, we really have nothing else we need to look out here, we'll go back into the screen. Maybe what we wanna do real quick before we wrap this review up, guys, is kinda of go into uh, the camera settings, the resolution. So you can see how we can, remember with that update, now we can shoot 60 frames per second. Awesome, huh? So in 4K from 24 to 60, in 2.7K, also 60 to 24. In 1080p, we have 24 to 60. So if we turn the camera to auto or manual, you can see how it's kind of getting dark in the evening here, but you can change all these settings when you go into pro auto. Okay, switches between pro and auto. So if you're a camera guy, at least you have that ability. Click on this here, and there's our slow motion over on the side. So we can switch it into slow motion. And that's just gonna give us the like 120 frames per second, right? Master shots, quick shots, hyperlapse, and pano. We're gonna go through all that in our flight test again, like I normally do. Let's go into photo here and see if we have any other options. Really good at focusing, check this out. It's focused on that cup in the back there. So a really good depth focusing. So I'm really impressed with this camera. It's almost like having a Mavic 2 Pro camera, except it's not a one inch sensor, right? And remember we have that zoom ability. So I'm gonna just go ahead and rotate that right roller on the top. 
make sure we're all focused in here and let's see just how close it'll focus and zoom in. So you can see on the right, it's going up to two times zoom. So not incredibly amazing, but at least we can get two times. Remember that's in photo mode. So say we went back to uh, video mode. Let's see how we can focus in on video mode. We'll go ahead and refocus on that cup in the back, pulling the right trigger again. And it doesn't look like we can zoom in. So possibly only on certain settings. Let's try to go to 2.7. Okay, so you can't you can't zoom in, uh, just digital zoom, but you can't do zoom in on 4K, only 2.7K. See that? Wow, you can actually go into three times, but it's just digital. It just gets more lower quality distorted as you zoom in. Let's see what it is at uh, 1080. And I'm just looking at that number on the right next to the record button, right? Well, we can go all the way to four times in 1080. Okay, guys, so details here you may want to know. All right, guys, well, I guess that's kind of enough. It hasn't shut down. That's great. Remember how we were having that overheating problem? It hasn't done that since I put that new battery in. Of course, the temperature has dropped. The drone is extremely hot right now. I'm picking it up and it's just like almost burning my fingers on the side. But it hasn't shut down again, so that's good. Maybe they'd work with some stuff in the update and kind of improve the cooling or something. But there is no fan in here. There's no noise. So they're banking on it cooling better when you're flying it. Controller's still at about half charge here. We got two lights. I'll let you know in the flight test if all of those lights lit up all the way, all four of them, if it can charge all the way. It seems like it's just like maybe a firmware issue. But anyway, pros and cons so far, uh, the overheating is a little bit of an issue. It does get very hot, like I said. Charging takes an extremely long time, and guess what? It's overheating again. So as you can see, that drone's gonna power off. So we'll just go ahead and let it do its thing while we're talking about it. So I take that back. It is gonna shut down after a certain amount of time. And there it goes, it just shut off. As I was saying, you cannot charge the controller at the same time it's charging the battery. So that's kind of a con. I would have thought maybe they would have improved that by now. Maybe at least give like a little extra voltage in the multi-charger to at least get this thing charging even slowly at least while these batteries are charging. So you can kind of have an all-in-one kit. Would be nice to have everything kind of charging at the same time. That's always been kind of a con with DJI. So I hope they can kind of fix that. Anyway, guys, we can't really do a whole lot more here on the table at least you got to kind of see everything close up see my first opinion and the unboxing updating we went through the whole update process just really make sure that you charge at least one full battery and charge your control up before you even attempt this anyway guys we're going to put this thing through the test in the flight test so stay tuned and subscribe go ahead and click that little icon my uh avatar down below to subscribe there and also check the link in the description of what i'm reviewing here and my camera equipment really appreciate you guys staying tuned sticking with me through this whole process this is not a quick and simple process it's fairly simple but it takes time and i hope you uh got something out of this uh initial setup anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you in the flight and range test